It uses a blockchain. A blockchain is one of several components that make Bitcoin work. And if you focus too much on blockchain, you may miss the point. What is the most important technology of the internet? What is the really important invention that makes the internet work? TCPIP, packet switching, TLS. But to take the internet and consider it only as a packet switching network means that the internet and an intranet, the internet and your local area network, are equivalent. Are they really? Was the real opportunity to be able to do packet switch networks, or is the real power of the internet the fact that it is open, global, transnational, borderless, censorship resistant, open access, and anyone can innovate without permission? This is the crucial issue. Where does the value of Bitcoin derive from? Yes, it is a blockchain, but it is a very special blockchain. It is a blockchain that uses as its fundamental consensus mechanism proof of work. And proof of work gives it certain characteristics that are unattainable so far as we know with other consensus mechanisms. Bitcoin is fundamentally open, borderless, transactional, transnational, censorship resistant, etc., etc., etc. All of these characteristics, they are both what it is and what makes it powerful. And ironically, they are also the things that most critics of Bitcoin point to as its greatest weaknesses. It cannot be allowed to exist if it is borderless and open to access. If it has no ability to be controlled, it cannot be allowed to exist. And yet, it exists. Bitcoin forgot to ask for permission. So, out of this experiment, this grand experiment that has lasted seven years, we now have this really disruptive force that is forcing us to reimagine what it means to do a payments network. And out of that, we come up with the most brilliant marketing campaign in the history of disruptive technologies. Imagine if you have invented a new disruptive technology, and you manage within four or five years to completely distract the incumbent by persuading them to follow in your footsteps and to adopt the central premise of your technology in order to disrupt their own business from the inside out. If the Bitcoin community had presented banks with the idea of blockchain, as we did, and said, here, put a billion dollars into training people on how to do things our way, and work in our space. I mean, someone should have gotten the Nobel Prize of marketing, the Oscar of disruptive distraction. But the truth is that the financial services environment seized on blockchain because they saw within it the possibility of using some elements of Bitcoin without being disrupted. But blockchain is not the only thing that makes Bitcoin tick. And so in this effort, we see many similarities to the early internet. In the early days of the internet, when companies saw the internet and they saw that it had no editorial control, no centralized security mechanism, no barriers to access, this represented a terrifying departure from the model of IT. And so as a result, most companies resisted. They built intranets using TCPIP, and they put heavy firewalls all around to separate those intranets keep them controlled, give them editorial access and control, and tame the system. They ended up with these islands of stagnant innovation that gradually became less and less secure. And then we had the second wave of the internet where many of the most effective disruptive companies in the space 
took their internal IT infrastructure, turned it inside out, faced the world, put everything on the internet, and fully harnessed the collaborative potential of keeping an open, accessible system. We no longer live in a world of Oracle and IBM. We no longer live in a world of dominance through enterprise computing and enterprise software. Apple is driving your IT faster than Oracle. Your systems are inside out or they are stagnant. Collaboration is the name of the game. The most robust and secure systems are the ones that are on the internet, subject to attack every single day, subject to competitive disruption every single day, and through that process they become robust. Ironic that 15, 20 years later, we're repeating this conversation with a blockchain. So the question is, if TCPIP isn't the magic sauce, but the really interesting thing is the open access collaborative global network, does that mean that intranets are useless? Does that mean that TCPIP on your LAN or your data center has no value? Of course not. These are still very powerful technologies. These are still very useful models of adopting. However, the best thing you can do with an intranet is interconnect it to other intranets. And for that, you need the internet. Bitcoin is the internet of money. Bitcoin is the de facto money of the internet. 